This is the Bet Central Podcast. Let's make some profits. Hello and welcome to the Bet Central Podcast powered by Betcoza. My name is Mitch Matiana, your host, and of course joined by our incredible analyst Grant as we jump into the latest DSTV premiership fixture that's happening this midweek. It all kicks off tomorrow, Grant. Uh, Super Sports taking on Golden Arrows. Both of those teams collecting three points over the weekend. Golden Arrows with an impressive 3 2 win. And of course, Super Sport traveling away from home, heading out to wine country to take on Stellenbosch. And they managed to come in clutch with a 2 1 win there. Yeah, I mean, Super Sport, we were talking in our preview, were on a quite a long winless run in their away fixtures. I think nine games, was it? Um, without a victory. So. Yeah, that was kind of threatening to derail any chances they had of of actually challenging for the title. But they went to Stellenbosch on a very good win, a very good result at least. The first half of that game, Stellenbosch were all over Super Sports on the counter attack. I mean, six, seven really good transition moments where like they were three v three, three v two, but they got their decisions wrong. Could have killed that game off in the first half, um, and then. Yeah, you know, with Gavin Hunt, obviously got the team into the ch- into the dressing room and solved some of those issues, made them a bit more compact, and they played their way back into the game quite smartly. And yeah, to be nine games winless for a team that uh, we know were in the top three last season, um, yeah, it was really concerning. So this is a massive victory for for Super Sports over the weekend, and Bradley Krobler was back as well, which means they now have got some pretty good depth in attack. You know, he might not start this game on Tuesday, but he, coming on yeah. as a sub. Is a massive boost, a massive boost for them because they only basically had two starting strikers and not, and not much to change games. So yeah, and I mean at home they are extremely strong. So I think they're going to fancy the chance of getting another win here. Yeah? And if you look at the way their season started, I mean, in the yeah they might have been knocked out of the MT8 Cup, but in in the league, you know it's it's three wins and a draw in four matches. It's really good form. Um, of course, my, it's probably not going to be enough to keep them, you know, uh, sort of keep pace with Sundowns because Sundowns have won all their fixtures, but. They, yeah, they're having a really strong start to the season. Um, they've won eight of their last nine home PSL games. Um, the other one was a draw. And Gone Arrows, even though they've been playing quite decently, even going back to last term, I mean, their last 11 games, they've only lost twice. Um, and they've had a reasonable start to this term. It's difficult to see them actually going to Super Sport and, and, and denying a victory there. Um, especially because Arrows don't really score in their away games. They've, they've fired blanks in three mm. of their last four away fixtures. And Arrows are kind of in transition this season. They most seasons they they sign a couple of players, one or two left, but they were had a very pretty quiet transfer windows as a club, and it was easy to you know to not to have wild swings in form. That's why they keep finishing ninth basically. But this season they've actually signed a lot of new players. Um, I think there could be four or five new players in their starting eleven. They've lost some bigger you know some bigger names. There's changes in goal. There's changes at up front. In the winger positions, midfield is a bit different. Fullback, we've got two new fullbacks as well, um, and centre back as well. There's some, um, yeah, some disruption there as well. There's the captain, you know, Tabani Zuki is still out long term. So yeah, I feel like they're, they're sort of in flux. I think Super Sport will beat them in this match, um, and Super Sport tend to score goals at home as well. Six of their last nine home games in the league, I've seen them score two or more goals. And then with Robla back, they get more threat, to, you know, late in the games as well. So. It's hard to look past a Super Sport win. I think I'll just back that, and then you can go for yeah. Super Sport win with, um, you know, with more than one point five goals as a team as another option. I think they scored two plus goals or a clean sheet with Arrows not really firing, you know, much on the on the road in terms of scoring. Even though Arrows got a good win this weekend, um, I thought they might draw with Paulo Kwame when I when I when I tipped the game, um, but they got a really good victory at home and. Yeah, there was much needed three points, but I think on their on their travels they'll lose the Super Sport this game. I'm I'm definitely going to back Gavin Hunt's team to win and yeah, stay in in the top two vague title race that they you know they might be in for the first ten or so rounds until Sundowns really pull away. Uh, let's move on over to the next fixture. I think both of these teams had a slow start. That's of course a lot of Pirates. They're going to be playing host to Cape Town City uh, coming tomorrow evening. Yes, this is a really this should be an exciting game. I mean, Pirates have been playing the you know Cap Champions League prelim rounds. They had to go to Camors and then they played the return fixture um, as well against Jabal Club and a four 0 win on aggregates. Probably slightly tighter than I expected it. I thought they might um, you know win by two or three goals away and four or five goals at home. Doesn't really matter. Um, Zakila Lapas is scoring goals just for fun. I mean, he's got eight this season, I think, if I'm not mistaken already, which is really impressive. 
Um, and yeah, they've had a slightly mixed start in the league. You wouldn't say it's been um, you know, as good as they expected. They they drew one one at Chipper United, and they lost at Stellenbosch in the, in the opening match. But yeah, I think they've got a good thing going. Um, that opening game, I think you can explain it. They played Dion Hot as a left back, and they just let them you know, let themselves open. Hopefully, nothing silly like that in this game. And yeah, Cape Town City's form. I mean, they won their first two matches of the season, but they've lost now. They've lost three in a row now, and. The issue is them putting the ball in the net, basically. I mean, last season they were so reliant on Kanisa Mayo. He hasn't scored yet this season. And maybe a slight crisis of confidence or maybe he's feeling a bit of the pressure of, of being having a slightly higher profile now, having won the Golden Boot. But he's played wide and he's played as number nine and he hasn't really had much impact on the games. So I think that's a bit of a concern. I mean, City have been playing better than their, right, their you know, results, maybe say. You know, that Chiefs game was tight. They probably could have had a draw in you know, um, in 19 minutes, taking that extra time. And the Sekakuna game, they conceded early and couldn't find yeah. a way through them. But they actually they played okay. They had some decent chances. But, yeah, it's just scoring goals right now. So getting Maya on the score sheet, getting Kutamela back, um, you know, back to fitness after his in sort of inactivity at sundowns, then I think they'll be in decent shape. And, of course, Kutamela is facing his former club as well. But having said that, if you look at the sort of the form guide, Pirates are very strong at home. They won eight of their last ten home fixtures with two draws. Um, they've scored fifteen goals in their last four matches at home. And City, of course, we've, as you said, have lost three games on the bounce, failed to score in their last two. So it feels like Pirates will probably win based on all those stats and the, and the trends. I'd say probably Pirates will win, and might not be by a big margin, maybe by one goal margin. I think they have too much for City right now. City are kind of trying to find their right balance to their team, integrate their new yeah. signings. Um, so I fancy Pirates. I think they're, yeah, they're playing good football at the moment. The new signings are actually settling in really well. Um, and Lepassa has, yeah, he's made, kind of made your commander a bit of a distant memory because of how freely he's scoring, which is nice for him. Um, he doesn't always do a lot within games. He works hard, but not that, you know, doesn't necessarily get a lot of touches. But if there's chances, he's just in the box. He's a poacher. So, yeah, maybe he'll score again and a Pirates win, I see, in this game. All right, let's jump into Wednesday's games. Uh, it starts off with Polokwane City as they host Mamelodi Sundowns. As you know, Sundowns, five for five so far in the DOS TV uh, premiership. Polokwane City, two wins, two draws. It looks like Sundowns is going to collect three points either way in this one. Yeah, it does feel that way. I mean, Polokwane have had a good start. They've always had the two home victories, you know, and... They beat Stellenbosch. They caught Stellenbosch on a good day because they played Stellies after they'd beaten Pirates and caught them a bit cold in the first half, a bit complacent, and took full advantage. They beat Cape Town Spurs as well, which is a good result against a relegation rival. And this weekend, they lost 3-2 to, you know, at Golden Arrows. They um, they they won up, then they were 3-1 down. So it didn't they weren't strongly in that match once they were 3-1 down. They pulled a goal back, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't enough to maybe, you know, really bat, you know, knock down the, the door and get a draw. But they're doing decently. They, they're, quite a, they're quite an open team. They commit quite a lot of men for. They're not parked in the bus or anything. But maybe a bit like not very compact. You know, they leave a lot of players up front and if they have defenders yeah. defending and attackers attacking. So, I mean, Sundowns are the worst team to play if you a team like that because th if there's any space between your lines, they will revel. And I mean, Sundowns have had, by their standards, um, a mini holiday. They didn't play this weekend. They had a few rest days finally. Because they've been very busy so far this season. They've played five league games. Everyone else has only played four or, or even three, um, besides Chipper, actually. And, yeah, these few days of rest would be really helpful. Um, so, yeah, I can only see Sunons winning the game. Maybe the slight worries that Sunons are playing Chiefs over the weekend in the MTN8, and that may be a slight distraction. And, of course, Peter Shalalile uh, is injured, so they're going to have to find solutions. You know, Lucas Ribeiro is a false nine, probably. And then you've got Lasibo and Kuhl, um, who's been doing very well since he joined from from, from Ruma Galant. He's a former Polo Kona City player. Um, and Juno Mendieta and Zuane, of course, and and uh, Marcelo Alenda. All these attacking midfielders will have to fill the void of a pure striker. But you can't really see anything about a Sundowns victory. Polo Kona City might make it a bit difficult, but Sundowns, I think, will win in the end and will probably score a few goals. They're going to make use of this Polo Kona space. Um, that they're going to provide them. So, yeah, I can see Sanon scoring more than two goals in the game, maybe three goals, and something like a 3-0 no, 
win maybe 3-1 if Paul O'Connor City really throw a caution to the wind and get a goal. But I think probably Salons will win 3-0 eventually, even if it takes a while. Um, I can't see any other results here, to be fair. Stellenbosch, uh, play host to Caves and Cheese. Massive fun spend for my team after the TS result, uh, beating Golden Arrows 3-0. And now they'll be going against Stellenbosch. I mean, you mentioned already MTN 8 will be the focus for this weekend. So these games might get a little bit tricky. What do you make of this one? Mm. Stellenbosch and Caves and Chiefs. Yeah, Stellies have Pirates in the MTN 8 over the weekend and Chiefs have Sundowns. So both will have distractions because they both are putting a lot of stock in the cup. Stellenbosch obviously want to eventually make a cup final. They were relatively close last season. They got to a semi. And Chiefs, we know, on your you know your team's on that, this, this long drought. So there'll be an eye <laughs> on that semi-final. I actually think Chiefs might be better off in this game, rotating a little bit. So they have a few fresh legs for the weekend and also make themselves slightly harder to analyze for Sundowns. You know, if they play exactly the same lineup um, from, their, from their weekend victory, then I think Sundowns will have a pretty good idea of what to expect. There won't be a lot of surprises so I think it might be, you know, might be wise to make a couple of changes there and there. Well, you know, without disrupting the team, you want to. They do need results. You know, one win is not going to keep the, you know, the pressure off Nseki's back. But I think maybe one or two changes there and there. You know, maybe Christian Saile on the wing. You know, he could come in. Maybe rotate a little bit in midfield. Um, Tim Kellerzwane maybe gets a game and just to keep things fresh and not too predictable. Keep the competition in the squad going. Um, but yeah, a really good win against Amadoulou. I, you know, I said Amadoulou can't score goals. They haven't scored this whole season. Um, but I thought that they had enough to keep Chiefs out, and it didn't prove that way. It just shows when you score in the fourth minute, like Pule Mori did, it really opens up the game for you. Uh, it makes the whole complexion difference, and you don't have to chase as much, and the opposition do have to open up. And I mean, that game was, I wouldn't say even, but if you look at the stats, I mean, Amadoulou did have pretty, have quite a few chances. And... Yeah. Yeah, Chiefs were pretty ruthless in that game. They're, you know, and more sort of uncharacteristically uncharac- ruthless took their chances. But that game was one 0 until the fifty eighth minute, so it was very much alive. And Amazulu were threatening. So yeah, it's not all rosy for Chiefs just yet. And it's a really tough game at Stellenbosch. Stellies win most of their home fixtures, even though they lost the Super Sport this weekend. They were excellent for forty five minutes. They got so much speed in that attack. You know, Rainers, Titus, um, whoever else plays. You know, Jaden Adams and whichever left winger they choose. Like I say, Jota might be really keen to impress against Chiefs in this one. So I think, um, generally, I think say Selimosh are favourites in this game. Um, it's a, quite a tough game to predict with all you know with the extra context of the cup. I mean, I think this one I might want to see the starting lineups because you know Selimosh last season they had a they had a cup game coming up and they rested a lot of players against Super Sport in an away league game and they lost there and they I think they rested nine of their best eleven. If they do the same here, then there's much more chance of Chiefs getting a result. So for this particular game, I think I'm going to wait till 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, see the lineups, and then go with what I feel might happen there, you know, based on the strength of, of the teams. Um, and then I think it could be any of the results, but I think I'm more likely to go for Stelis to win or at least double chance there yeah. for Stelis because I'd be surprised if Chiefs win there. Um, yeah, so a difficult one to, for the, you know, from a betting perspective, I think it's a wait-and-see game. Now, Richards play play host to Sekakone United. Uh, Richards Bay have yet to win a game uh, in the DSTV Premiership. Could this game be it? I don't think so. But what do you think, Grant? Mm. Yeah, look, Richards Bay are in dreadful form. I mean, really bad form. They're 19 matches in League and Cup without, without a win. And the last 13 games, they've scored three goals. So they're really struggling. I feel a bit bad for you know, Gitano Tembo because he's got some injuries that are not helping him. Especially in midfield, you know, Lucky Mahomes out, Abba Mambasa's out. He's been out the whole season, so they like two really crucial players. They would be anchoring that midfield and experienced and bring control. And the captain's out at right back, um, Papate. So and he's really good going forward. He's the one guy that can actually create some attacking threat and chances. Um, and even up top, they signed him Gomazulu from Stelis, but he said, you know, the coach says that the, that deal isn't completely sort of ratified, he hasn't got his card yet, basically. So that's another option they've lost in the forward area. So, yeah, they, they're in really poor form. And generally, they, Sekakuna would have been a, a good game for them because Sekakuna yeah. was so poor on the road last season. They were great at home, but they were terrible in their away games. But this season, Brad Trudis got... They've won their last two away fixtures. Um, so he's clearly solved something there. Um, they went to, obviously, Cape, to Cape Town City and won. Um, and before that, they also won at Cape Town Spurs. And yeah, they're both games in Cape Town and 
recruiters from Cape Town, maybe a bit more motivated. But I think they can go to Richards Bay and, and, and get at least something, if not win the game. I'd obviously be surprised if this is the game Richards Bay finally get a victory. Um, it's been, they've been waiting since January. So, um, of course, the law of averages say at some point they'll get a win. But I like the Sikakuna team. They're really solid. They've, they're good at the yeah. back. They've got speed up in an attack. And um, I think they'll win 1-0 if I had to go for a scoreline or a prediction of how I see it going. As a 1-0 Sikakuna win. On a betting front, I'd probably back them to keep a clean sheet. So it's slightly safer. Might might be no-no. And Richards Bay just don't score. So it seems it's a pretty safe bet. Um, yeah, I just don't see this, the Natal Rich boys ending their, their streak in this one. And then, of course, Swallows play host to Cape Town Spurs. Uh, the newly promoted side have not had it easy uh, in the league. They've yet to register a win. Swallows are also looking to collect three points. They've only had one win this season so far. Uh, yeah, it's looking quite tricky for Cape Town Spurs, Grant. But to be honest with you, I think Swallows might just get three points in this one. Yeah, look, Swallows got that very fortunate victory against the Kakuna in their last game uh, with a the 93rd, I think, minute goal, the own goal from the keeper where he was pushed into the net, basically. And, I mean, that's a huge relief for Compella. You know, he won't, in, in a week or two, or even now, he probably won't care too much about how it came. It's just being high up the log. They're, they're still only 12th, but they, there's, you know, those extra two points have made a huge difference to them. And I think it just gives him a bit of breathing room um, as they build kind of a new team. Uh, Andy Lejali still suspended in this game after his red card against Sundowns. Not necessarily sure that's a bad thing. You probably need some time to actually get fit on the training grounds, and um, they have cover there. You know they've got Palani and Mtetwa, and they've got decent midfielders, so um, they don't think they'll be too ha- hampered by that. But as you say, kept on Spurs um, predictably, as we've, we know we, we said at the start of the season, they they haven't gone into the window and strengthened their side nearly enough. They've done kind of what Luton have done in the Premier League. You know, a couple of signings there and there. Um, then guys that can kind of maybe squeeze into the eleven, but aren't bona fide yeah. Premier League players that, yeah, can bring real quality to the squad. So they're struggling to score goals. They've netted once in four games. Most of the games this season, I think, are going to be, yeah, their defeats will be like one goal margins and defeats to zero. Um, and Swallows is going to be a tougher way a fixture for for them. I I don't see them getting points um, in this game. And then they have Pirates at home next. So I mean. It, they kind of need to take a, a draw in this game, in the in the rot, and then if they lose to Pirates, at least they have something on the board because yeah, they yeah. could pretty quite easily be played six, lost six, and it's very hard to come back from that. So we saw with Maruma Gallants last season, even a really strong run of form in the second half of the season just makes it just too much work to do. Six games in the PSL is 20% of the season. It's not like in a 38-game league. So I'm really worried about them. They, they, they don't have players who can score goals. They don't have pace at the back. They don't have much athleticism in midfield so a Swallows win looks pretty banker yeah um, the only thing I'd say is Swallows been a little bit disjointed in their setup you know two number nines pure number nines playing together doesn't really work that well Malinga and Mabasa um, yeah. they need someone to link things so maybe they'll struggle to score and Spurs could get a normal draw that's probably the best that you can hope for as a as a kept on Spurs fan but I think I'd lean towards Swallows winning this one maybe with a with a clean sheet as well now, Chipper will be playing uh, host Royal M, Chipper United, the, the other team that's only played uh, five games, but only one win in that five. Royal AM will look to at least climb up the table. They only find themselves in 13th place with their recent win coming now. Grant, how do you find this game on a betting front? How would you go about it? Yeah, it's a tough one to do, to figure out. You know, Chip was a, a solid, consistent team. There's not a big swing in their performance levels from week to week. Um, yeah, their coach might say they go head to head with opponents, but they, they they're a solid team. They're strong defensively, very experienced backline with you know Shabalala and, and Peterson there, and they've got two defensive midfielders usually most you know most games. Um, so they're a hard team to break you know to break down. Very very good win for them against Cape Town Spurs away. Um, yeah, it just shows they they. I mean, the change is the complexion of their season. If they'd drawn that game, then they've yeah they've got a bunch of draws, and especially if it was no no, you know, there'd be a lot more question marks. Gives so much breathing room to the coach. Um, he's he's not going to be like one game from the sack like the chipper game is always like chipper coaches always feel. He's got a little bit of breathing room, maybe a few games, you know, credit in the bank now. Um, Ronaldo Marman scored, who 
was very good last season, got quite a few assists for them, and he's joined permanently now from Pirates. So yeah, even without a proper striker, they're, they're doing okay. I think clean sheets are, the, are going to be the name of the game for them in, you know, in this fixture as well and through the whole season probably. And Royal AM, we know they don't score a lot of goals. They're not particularly strong on their travels. But yeah, credit to them. They got a very good win on Sunday against TS Galaxy. I fancy that game to be low scoring. I uh, thought possibly under 1.5 could be a safe bet, but I was leaning more towards Galaxy getting the win, so I didn't quite call that one correctly. And yeah, second half goal from Tabo Matlaba. But John Maduka's playing loads of players from their, from their Disky side, um, which you should do if you've got a transfer ban. You know, try and freshen up the team with some you know, younger yeah. options, um, fresh legs. And they've still got a decent amount of experience, especially up front. They've got options there. You know, Sarah, Machupu, Hamodin, experienced, very experienced players. And then they've got um, Spiwetele in midfield, who's... Um, He's got two goals a season already, a, like a young attacking winger, very nice finishes as well. So, yeah, maybe as the season goes on with good coaching, Maduka's clearly a good coach, um, you know, the famous Maduka ball. If he coaches these younger players and bloods them nicely instead of playing some of the older legs they had last season, you know, like Palani and Nascimento and stuff, they could eventually have a good side. But I think in this game, Chip are, you know, favorites at home, but I think it's more likely to be a low-scoring affair. I think I'd stick to under 1.5 goals bet, at least if it's no no or Chipper win one no, you you know you covered. I'm not really brave enough to go to back Chipper to win a second game in a row, even though you know my Milas, um, my Milas got, uh, got four wins in a row for Chipper last season when he was in charge. I'd just be surprised if they go on a streak of wins again. So under 1.5 is how I'd probably go on the betting front. And to wrap up uh, our midweek action, Amazon taking on TS Galaxy. Both teams find themselves losing this past weekend. Uh, could Which one do you see is most likely to bounce back? Sure. I mean, I think TS Galaxy are more likely to bounce back because they, they've, always done, they've pretty much always done that. So they've had a few streaks without wins in the, you know, in the last 12 months, but not very many streaks of you know, double defeats in a row. They usually follow up a defeat with it being very solid in the next game, keep a clean sheet. Um, and of course, when you play Amazulu who can't score goals, then you, you always have a good chance of a clean sheet. I mean, Amazulu this weekend against against Chiefs in a slightly more open game against a more attacking opponent. They actually created some chances for once. But yeah, they as I keep saying, they, they haven't got enough quality in, on the flank. You know, Wade Uester, um, he's played a lot of his football as a fullback in the last three seasons. And he's playing kind of as like a right winger slash right back, kind of a defensive winger. Moremi on the other side, you know, he's not experienced. He's come, he come from the Disky side um, about a year, 18 months ago. Started featuring, they don't have enough goals in their team. They've, they've basically got six defensive yeah. players and they're starting 11. And then they've got a lot of strikers. Um, and Thule played this weekend instead of Quem. Um, you know, Letzuala was on the bench. Um, he hasn't really, you know, hit the ground running since he joined. And Sidi Dion, who was doing well for them, he's out for, I think, three months. So their attacks, but I don't know, disjointed. They've got good options, but they don't really link up all together and there's no clear number one there. Yeah. So a bit of a tough game. I mean, Amazulu's recruitment's just been their biggest problem for years. Um, I feel bad for their coach because if you look at the season so far, it's you know played four, three draws, zero goals scored. Pressure will start building on him, especially um, if they don't get a victory at home. Yeah, uh, home, home games always crank up the pressure on you. So I think it's set up for TX Galaxy to go there and really frustrate them, be solid and steady and streetwise with all the older players, and yeah, just maybe make you know maybe cause an upset. I'll probably go again for under one point five goals here. Um, Galaxy's games had a lot of those last season, and so do Amazulu's games. And at least it covers me a bit if Amazulu come to life and win one 0 um, or if TX Galaxy cause an upset. Well, not really an upset, but if they get a one 0 victory. In KZN, then yeah, I'm covered for three score lines. So that's probably how I'd go. But yeah, the broader conversation is Amazulu's disappointing recruitment over maybe the last four transfer windows since Benny McCarthy left. And then how coaches have kind of been scapegoated for the... I mean, of course, they're responsible for results, but they haven't quite been given the right tools by the club. So that's kind of the bigger conversation and they need results soon, or this, otherwise the new coach will get some some pressure. So... Under 1.5 goals. That's my my call for this game. Yeah. Well, there we go. That's how we wrap things up. PSL action coming thick and fast. 
Uh, let us know how you'll be going about it in terms of betting by simply tagging us at Betcoza. I've been Mitch Magnana. That's been Grant. We'll see you again. Cheers.